Today, my message is entitled, Scandalon. Scandalon. And we're continuing in the series, Stronger in Broken Places. I want to start off my message today with a question. And I want you to raise your hand. How many of you have ever had someone hurt you? Raise your hand. A hundred percent in this room. So I think the Holy Spirit's really on point with the message he's put in my heart today. Some of us have been hurt through an under, misunderstanding. There's sometimes that we are hurt inadvertently. It's a misunderstanding. The person didn't um, mean to do what they did, and, and we get hurt from it. Sometimes it could be a betrayal, an intentional hurt. But whenever hurt enters your life, if you're not careful, the devil will use that hurt to stop you in that moment. Time will freeze, years will pass, decades will pass, but you will still be stuck in the moment that the person hurt you. Here's the good news. I do have good news today. You can be free. Now you may say, yeah, but pastor, you, you don't know what they did. Well, let me ask you the question, who hurt you? How did they hurt you? Maybe you're in here today and somebody gossiped about you. They, they spread rumors. Maybe somebody lied about you. When I was a kid, we used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Words hurt really bad. Words can destroy a reputation. Words can destroy what you've worked for for years. And somebody can spread a lie and spread a rumor. And now you have to live with that stigma on your life of what somebody said. Maybe you're in here today and a spouse cheated on you. That's a terrible hurt. I can't even imagine what that hurt would feel like. Maybe you have a, a loved one that was killed by, in a car crash or a drunk driver. The, the, the other person lived so many times. How many, how many times do we watch on the news that somebody got drunk, they got into a crash, the drunk driver lives, and the people who weren't drinking die? And now you having to live with that. Maybe you're in here today and a dad abandoned you. And he abandoned you at a pivotal moment in your life. And, and you know what? It doesn't matter when a parent abandons you. It's a pivotal moment. You may be five. You may be 15. It's a pivotal moment. It'll mark you forever. When, when a parent who is always supposed to be in your life walks out. Maybe you were abused. Physically abused. And you know what's just as bad as physical abuse? mental abuse. Sometimes uh, we, we can see physical abuse. You can't see mental abuse, but it's just as painful. Maybe you were molested. I was reading a statistic the other day that young ladies, by the time they graduate high school, one in three will be molested. One in three. Maybe somebody molested you, hurt by someone you love. You could be in this room today and be bitter at God. Let's just be real. Some of you in this room are just mad at God. You are mad at God that you feel like he didn't answer your prayer. He didn't do what you wanted him to do. Or you feel like God has treated you badly. But there's another group of people in this room. You won't forgive yourself. I, I, can, I can sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes it's easier for me to forgive other people than it is for me to forgive myself. And I have done things that caused myself pain. I've made bad decisions, that's decisions that caused me pain. And now I live with this bitterness against myself. But today I'm going to ask you to forgive. And you know what? It's impossible with us. But the good news is, with God, all things are possible. We can forgive. I want you to turn in your Bibles or you can look on the screen to Luke chapter 17. And I'm going to start reading with verse number one. This is a powerful, powerful scripture. And this is Jesus talking here. Luke 17, verse one. Then Jesus said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him th whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck. He were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. 
Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. In other words, that means let him know. Bring him to awareness of what's taking place. Rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he forgives you, if, if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, repent, you shall forgive him. Verse 5. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Now I want you to notice what Jesus says here in verse number one. He says, it is impossible. Now, if Jesus uses the word impossible, we might want to listen. What he's saying is it is impossible for you to go through life without ever being offended. If you've been born, you're going to be offended. If you join City Gate Church, guess what? We're going to offend you. Somebody's going, we are equal opportunity offenders here at City Gate Church. We offend everybody. You're going to be offended. To live is to be offended. We're all going to have these offenses come into our life. And that's what Jesus says. The offenses will come. What's interesting is that word offense. The word offense is translated scandalon. Everybody say scandalon. That's where we get our word scandal, scandalous. But the word scandalon here means a trap. But not just a trap, a trap built on purpose. The hunter has built a trap for the hunted. So I want you to imagine right now in some area of your life, the devil is hard at work building a trap, a scandal on. And he is waiting for the moment that offense comes into your life. And when offense comes into your life, he is waiting for you to take the step. And when you do, he's going to spring the trap. And you're going to be caught in this trap. Time will stop. You'll be stuck in that moment and you'll feel like you can't get out. In fact, I would say there are three groups of people in this room. There are people that's just getting out of a trap. There are people that are in a trap. And there are people that are about to go into a trap. Offense will happen. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to stop the traps from being built. You cannot stop the traps from being built in your life. It's up to you to choose to either get in or get out of the trap. When people offend you, there is a trap. And here's what I've learned. It's usually the closest to us that offend us the most. Can I get a good amen? Here's why. Your enemies can't betray you. The reason your enemy can't betray you is because you expect them to act like that. You don't expect your friends and loved ones to act like that. So when they do it, it hurts us. Only those close can pull our heart out. But part of loving is giving someone permission to hurt you. Unforgiveness. What does unforgiveness do? Unforgiveness takes advantage of you. I want them to put up 2 Corinthians chapter 2. I want, look, we're going to read this together. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, starting with verse 10. The apostle Paul is speaking. He says, now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Watch the next verse. Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. What is the device he's talking about here? He's talking about the trap. He said, I'm not going to let the devil build a trap for me and me get stuck in this trap all because I wasn't willing to forgive. No, when this offense comes, when we feel it moving into our lives, when we feel the enemy building this trap, get ready, Satan's ready to take advantage of you. He wants to get you stuck, and this is what's amazing. You'll get stuck in a trap, and the person who offended you will go on and live a great life. And you're still stuck back here. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever been in traffic? And somebody pulls out in front of you and you lose your temper and you begin to think, you know what that person did? They woke up this morning. I know what they did. They woke up this morning and they said, I don't even have to go anywhere. I'm just going to get in the car to run somebody's day. And they knew me and they waited for me to get on the highway just so they could pull out in front of me and run my day. And you know what that person's going forward thinking? 
I can't find that song I'm looking for on my iPad, my iPhone. They don't even know they cut you off. They're going to go enjoy the rest of their day. Your whole day is going to be ruined because you weren't ready for the trap. The devil does not take advantage of the offender. The devil takes advantage of the offended. And Paul said to stay out of this trap, you have to develop a lifestyle of forgiving, 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 forgiving. If I had a big bottle of poison up here today, big bottle of poison, and I hand it to you and I say, come on, drink this. You wouldn't drink that. Why? It's poison. But here's what unforgiveness does. Somebody said, unforgiveness is like me drinking poison, hoping the other person dies. Some of you swigging every day of your life. Keep on swigging that poison, swigging that poison and looking and gritting at somebody, hoping that something bad happens to them. It's not going to happen to them. It's happening to you. You're destroying your life. Your life is dying. Your life's not moving forward. Their life's going on and great. The devil has taken advantage of you. Tell somebody, don't drink the poison. What is forgiveness? Let me give you some things about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is a spiritual decision to release the person or group who hurt or betrayed you. It's a spiritual decision. It's not a mental decision. It's not a decision of the flesh. It is a spiritual decision that I'm going to release that person. I'm going to release that group that hurt me. I've known people get offended at a whole group. All because they met one person from that group. Now they've judged the whole group. Somebody said to me, all white people. I said, have you met all us white people? Did you meet us all? No, you met one dumb representative from our white group. Do not think they represent all of us. We didn't elect them to represent the whole white race. Come on. Don't judge a group because you had an interaction with one person. All church people. Have you met all church people? All church people are hypocrites. No, you met one church person. One. Not all of us. One. But you've judged a whole group because of your experience with one. But when I forgive, I'm making a spiritual decision to release that person and release that group who hurt or betrayed me. Forgiveness is dismissing our demand that they owe us something. Forgiveness is releasing the right to be bitter or get even. Forgiveness is of God. Forgiveness is release. Oh, I don't know if you're ready for this one. Hold on. Forgiveness is releasing the demand to hear I'm sorry. See, when I forgive you, whether you apologize or not has nothing to do with it. Even if you never, even if I never hear the words, I'm sorry, I still forgive. Forgiveness is an act of faith. Forgiveness, listen to this, is a process. Especially if a person has been abused or deeply hurt. It's a process to walk through. Well, let me tell you what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not a feeling or emotion. Forgiveness is not conditional. I'll forgive you if. Somebody taught me a long time ago, don't ever apologize by saying, I'm sorry, but. I'm sorry, but. How many ever got an apology like that? I'm sorry, but you did this. I'm sorry, but this happened. I'm sorry, but I had a reason. No, that's not forgiveness. Forgiveness is not conditional. Forgiveness is not, forgiveness is not based on what's fair. Forgiveness does not justify what the person, what the wrong the person did. Forgiveness is not based on what they deserve. Forgiveness is not waiting for time to heal all wounds. Some of you thank you for giving people. You just swept it under a rug. You just think time's eventually going to wipe, wipe it away, wash it away. Forgiveness is not, listen, reconciliation. Reconciliation takes two people. Forgiveness takes one. Well, I hear people say, should I forgive them? What if they don't accept it? What if they won't even talk to me? What if they won't receive my apology? What, what if they won't listen when I say forgive me? Here's what somebody told me. 
It's your job to build the bridge. It's their job to walk over it. They may never walk over it, but at least you can go to heaven saying, I built the bridge. I built the bridge. Forgiveness is not enablement. It's not okaying a bad behavior. Forgiveness, I like this. Forgiveness is not letting the guilty off the hook. It's putting them on God's hook. Forgiveness is not denying the wrong that happened to you. Some people think when they forgive, they're acting like nothing ever happened. No, something happened. You're not denying that something happened. You're just forgiving. So why should I forgive? I want to give you a couple important points of why we should forgive. Number one, because unforgiveness hurts me. It hurts me. Luke chapter 17, verse 6. Jesus is going to talk about this tree and watch what he says. The Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry, it's also known as a sycamine tree. You can say to the sycamine tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. Now there's some unique characteristics to a sycamine tree that Jesus knew what he was talking about. First off, look about when he mentions, look at when he mentions the sycamine tree. It's right after he has told the disciples the importance of forgiving. And then he says, you can speak to this tree and command it to be moved. Well, number one, in that area, the sycamine tree grows faster than any other tree in the Middle East. The sycamine tree produces a very bitter fruit. And the sycamine tree has roots that grow very deep. What's fascinating is that the writer of Hebrews is going to come along later and he's going to say, let no root of bitterness get attached in your life, lest it grow and produce fruit that will affect a lot of people. There are people all around you that are being affected because you let a seed of bitterness get in your heart. It's grown this tree. This tree's producing a bitter fruit. Bitter fruit. You want to know what happens to people? They get old. They get a nursing home, 75 years old, and they're the old grumpy person sitting over in the corner by themselves complaining about everything. It's all because they didn't deal with the seed of bitterness that got down in their heart decades before. And when that seed, the reason you got to deal with that seed quick, here's what the Bible says. When something offends you, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Why? Because Jesus knew how quickly this tree grows. He said, deal with this tree quickly. Don't let the sun set before you kill that tree. Because if it starts to grow, it's going to produce bitter fruit and the roots are going to go way, way down deep. If you let it go for a year, two years, five years, Not only are you going to have trouble moving the tree, you're going to have trouble digging out the roots. Here's another thing about the sycamine tree. You know how it pollinates? It pollinates through wasps. Wasps land on the fruit of the tree and they put their stinger to the heart of the fruit. And when the wasp stings to the heart of the fruit, the tree is pollinated and then it can begin to reproduce. Isn't that just what the devil does? He stings us in our heart. Fruit starts reproducing in our life of bitterness. And then he sends something else, stings us again. And now all this bitterness is multiplying in our life. And now we're surrounded by trees. Some of you started with a tree and now you're standing in a forest of bitterness. You got unforgiveness all around you. And these wasps the devil keeps sending these wasps to sting you in your heart and they keep multiplying here's the last thing I want to tell you about a sycamine tree the wood of the sycamine tree is what was used to build caskets in that day think about this why did Jesus say speak to that tree because he said if you don't the roots will go deep Wasps will start drawing. It'll draw wasps that'll keep on stinging you. And now more hurts start coming into your life. And now you're surrounded by death. And you can't move forward because you got all these trees in your way. So what did Jesus say to do? Speak to the tree. Forgive and speak to that tree and say, get up, get out of my life. I'm tired of you standing in my way. I'm tired of you blocking my joy and blocking my peace and blocking my happiness. Somebody's about to speak to the tree today. Number two, why should I forgive? Because I'll need it again. 
Do I have any perfect people in the room? No, none, no takers. See, if you'd have raised your hand, you'd have to repent for lying. You ain't perfect. I'm going to need forgiveness again. And Jesus tells a parable. And here's what he says. He says, this man was called before a court. It's like a debtor's court. And the judge is presiding over the case. And this man owed 10,000 talents. Now, if we were to equate it in our currency today, this man owed approximately $10.5 billion. He is getting ready to be sent to debtor's prison to work back the debt. Now, if you do the math, if the man would have made a day's wages for that time, if he would work every day in this hard labor debtor's prison, if he worked for 20 years, he would have just paid back one of the 10,000 talents. That's how much he owed. He pleads with the judge, please, I've, I've messed up. I got myself in trouble. I never intended to get this far into debt. Please forgive me. And this judge, Jesus says, has mercy on him and wipes out his debt. One word, he's wiped clean. Says you're free to go. The man walks out of the courthouse. He gets down to the street where he sees a guy that owes him a couple hundred dollars a day's wages, one day's wages. He owes him a couple hundred dollars. And this man says, where's my money? The man's like, I'm so sorry. I don't have it to pay you back. Well, that man who was just forgiven begins to beat the man that owes him just a little bit of money. Guess what? The judge found out about it. The judge called him back in and, and put my scripture up on the screen. Here's what the judge said to him. Then the master called the servant in and said, you wicked servant. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured. He's no longer even going to get to work it off. He is going to be tortured every day of his life until he is able to pay back all that he owed. Can I tell you the point Jesus is making here? He'll never pay it back. Next verse. Jesus said, this is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. That's a serious verse right there, church. God's saying here, Jesus is saying here, you owed more than you could ever repay. And God wiped your slate clean. And now somebody did one thing to hurt you. Yeah, but pastor, that's a good little illustration, but you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, but I know what you did to Jesus. And I can tell you, nobody has ever treated you the way we have treated Jesus. And he still hung on that cross and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And Jesus says, if you can't do what I've done for you, then I'm going to make you pay back all that you owe. I have a debt too high to pay. So instead of me getting in that, I'm just going to forgive everybody. I'm going to forgive everybody. You can't hurt me bad enough that I won't forgive you. God takes forgiveness pretty serious. Why should I forgive? Because unforgiveness hurts me. Because I'll need it again. But here's the third thing. Because, and this is really important, so listen up, all right? Why should I forgive? Because I don't want to miss heaven. I want to go to heaven. Do I have anybody that wants to go to heaven in the room? I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. Matthew 6, 14, put it up on the screen. Jesus says, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. My next verse, Mark 11, here's the, here's the word of faith, right? Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen. Glory to God. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against any, hold up second God I thought this was a great faith thing I thought I was moving mountains I thought my prayers were getting answered yeah well here's the key to it when you stand praying if you have anything anybody know the Greek definition of anything 
anything. That's right. Against anyone. Anybody know the Greek definition of anyone? Anyone. Forgive him that your heavenly father and that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. Listen what he says there. If you don't forgive people, God is almost, get this image, handcuffed to forgive you of your sins. He can't even forgive you until you've forgiven everybody else. Well, wasn't God, I mean, he didn't mean anything, did he? He meant anything. Well, he didn't mean anyone, did he? He meant anyone. Watch what he says. But if you do not forgive, neither will, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. How do I get to heaven? I have to be forgiven of my sins. If I have sin in my life, I can't. God's not going to let uh, liars uh, lying into heaven, the, the sin of lying or the sin of adultery. He's not going to let that into heaven. So if we have sin in our life, we can't go to heaven. So what do I do? I got to go to God and I got to pray and I confess my sins and he's faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins. So I pray, Lord, forgive me. And God says, forgive that person. I can't, God. You don't know what they did. Then I can't forgive you. So when you forgive them, come back and we'll talk. So here's, there's two things that Jesus is saying here. Number one, if I have unforgiveness in my heart, my prayers don't get answered. Number two, if I have unforgiveness in my heart, I can't go to heaven. Now, I don't know who hurt you, but here's what I've learned. They ain't worth it. Look at somebody next to you and say, you just ain't worth it. I love you, you're good and all, but I'm not about to go through life not getting my prayers answered because of you. I'm not about to miss out on eternity in heaven because of you. I got news for you. That husband may have walked out on you, but he ain't worth it. That person at work may have lied on you, but they ain't worth it. That boss may have mistreated you, but they ain't worth it. People may have done you wrong, but they ain't worth it. I'm going to get my prayers answered, and when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. And I'm not about to miss out on all the goodness of God because you acting a fool up in here. No thank you. I love you, but you just ain't worth it. how you got to get in life and forgive. I forgive you. I forgive. You're just not worth it. So let's talk about this. So how do I forgive? How do I forgive somebody who hurt me? Because I'm not denying today that the hurt is real. It is very real. Number one, decide. Everybody say decide. decide. You'll never forgive if you wait until you feel like it. It's kind of, forgiveness is just like exercise. You'll never do it if you wait till you feel like it. You just got to make up in your mind. But here's what I've learned. Feelings follow actions. Right actions trigger right feelings. Number two, depend. Everybody shout depend. I got news for you. You can't forgive them. I, I know they, they treated you bad. You can't forgive them. You can't. You don't have the ability without the Holy Ghost. If you want to forgive, you're going to need the, the, the help, the power, and the strength of the Holy Spirit in your life. Watch what the disciples say in Luke 17, 4. Now, you know what they had said, that, that you know, Lord, that the law teaches that if somebody for, uh, sins against you seven times, forgive them. Jesus says, I don't care what that said. I tell you that if your brother sins against you 70 times seven, that's how many times you're supposed to forgive him in a day. And do you know their response? You would have think they would have said, Lord, give us the spirit of forgiveness. Lord, give us the strength to forgive. You know what they said? Increase our faith. I love this. Because forgiveness equals faith. The more forgiveness I have, the more faith I have. Faith comes through forgiveness. The level of my faith is equal to the level of forgiveness that is operating in my life. How does that make sense? Because when I forgive somebody, I'm taking them out of my heart and putting them in God's hands. And that takes faith to do that. It takes faith to believe that God will fight your battle. It takes faith to believe that God will justify you, that God will expose the truth. It takes faith to believe that God 
will restore everything they tried to steal. So every time I forgive, I'm taking them out of my heart and putting them in God's hands. And I go on with my life. And I do this third thing. I obey. Everybody shout obey. obey. Matthew 5, verse 43 and 44. Do you have it on the screen? If not, I'll look at it. There we go. Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Anybody heard that? But I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Watch, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So we need to obey. What is it we're obeying? We're going to obey what the Bible tells us to do. And number one, that's this. We are to pray for those who hurt us. I know what you're thinking. Oh, pastor, I pray for them every day. I pray they get rabies. I pray they show up to work foaming at the mouth. I pray, Lord, I, I, some of you are praying for your ex to get hemorrhoids. You're like, Lord, give them hemorrhoids to the point they can't sit down. They can't find peace. Lord, just give them, give them hemorrhoids, Jesus. Come on, God, you did that to your enemies in the Old Testament. Do it to my enemies. I pray for them every day. That's not the prayer Jesus is talking about, folks. You know how Jesus is telling us to pray? Pray blessings. How do I know when I've forgiven somebody when I can get on my knees and say, Lord, bless them. Give them promotions, God. God, I pray you would encourage them today. Give them health and long life, God. I just pray you'd be good to them today, God. If they don't know Jesus, let them find Jesus. I don't want them to go to hell, Jesus. I want them to go to heaven. Lord, when you can bless them, then you know you're stepping into forgiveness. Here's what I've learned about prayer. My prayer may not change them, but it'll always change me. So I'm going to pray. And you may never change, but I promise you every time I get up, I'm changed from prayer. Here's number two. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Has anybody in here been forgiven of anything? Can I just see your hand? Do I have anybody that's forgiven? Now here's what Jesus is saying. You forgive at the same measure that I forgave you. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Do you have that? Here we go. Bear with each other. Forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Forgive as the Lord forgave us. How did Jesus forgive you? Two ways. Number one, Jesus forgave you completely. How many times do we forgive people partially? I forgive you for this, but not for that. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't forgive you of 99% of your sins and hold on to one. He forgave you completely. You know how else Jesus forgives? Constantly. Thank the Lord. Because how many goes through your day saying, God, forgive me for that one. I, that, that was an angry thought. Forgive me for that one, God. I shouldn't have talked to them like that. Forgive me for that one, God. That was road rage. Lord, forgive me for that one. God, I shouldn't have done that. Lord, forgive me for that. You go through your day just saying, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. And you know what's great? Every time you come to Jesus, he says, forgiven, forgiven. You come to him in the morning, forgiven. You show up to work, forgiven. Lunch, I forgive you. No matter how many times you go to Jesus in the day, he keeps forgiving and forgiving completely and constantly. And how are we to forgive? Completely and constantly. Completely. Completely and constantly. Completely and constantly. Why? Because I'm not going to miss heaven for you. And I'm not going to not get my prayers answered because you. Because of you. So what do I do? Well, what did the Bible tell us to do? He said, I want you to speak to that tree and command it to go into the sea. Now, where have I heard about the sea and sin before? Your Bible says that the Lord took your sins, which were many, and he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered against you again. 
Now I know you can't forget what happened to you. It happened and you can't change it. It happened and you can't forget it. But you can refuse today to let that tree stand in your way one more day. I'm tired. This tree has blocked my happiness. This tree has blocked my peace. This tree has held back my potential. This tree has held back my family. This tree has gotten in my marriage. This tree has gotten in. It's starting to get into my kids. But no longer. Today I'm going to speak to the tree. And I'm going to say get up out of my way. Go to the sea. You're not going to hold my life back one more day. I'm going to speak to the wasp. No more stinging me in my heart. No more fruit. No more roots. I'm speaking to the tree today. Somebody give God a big praise in this house. Come on.